So tell me if you've heard this question before, because it's a classic that I like. Mm -hmm. We'll start with the good old black and white image. So we're going to, for simplicity, assume that we have a, a square image. Black and white image, yeah. That's how we represent every, the world. And every pixel is uh, black or white. Yeah. That is how we represent the world, yep. Okay, okay. Uh, so you have this black or white image, mm -hmm. and I'm going to define a rectangular outline as the one pixel border around of pixels around a rectangle. So they define oh. a rectangle um, of, let's say it has to have, well, it can have no area, mm -hmm. but you have to have like an outline. So every area pixel in the outline as, has to be black. Area defined as uh, the number of pixels within the border that is not on the border. Yeah, the number of pixels fully contained, not on the border. Okay, so the border needs at least four pixels. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So the the cl the classic black and white image, and you're making a border, and you got to optimize something. Question. Yeah, you know, it actually might be nicer now that I think about it if we define the area as including the border. Okay. Because now I can sort of nicely just say I want you to maximize the area. I was going to go with perimeter, but I think area will be nicer. Oh, okay, maximize the area. What was the constraint on the, uh, on the border? Yeah, right. So you have this black and white image. You need to find the rectangle which has the largest, the rectangular perimeter that has the largest area. Yeah, but like, what, what, what's the constraint on the perimeter? Otherwise, it's just the whole, the whole thing. Well, not quite. This is a searching problem, right? So you get given a fixed black and white image. Mm -hmm. and there are some rectangular borders in that image. Mm -hmm. Over all those rectangular borders, find the one with the largest area. But we're saying a border has to contain all black pixels. That's the definition of a border. Um, depends what you mean by contain. All the pixels on the border must be black, but okay. the ones inside the rectangle can be whatever. Okay, okay. Yeah. Cool. So um, it, it, it can be possible that there is none, in which case just say that the largest area is zero. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so those is rectangular, right? Not square. Yeah, so I know you've heard the square one before, but I don't know if you've heard the rectangular one, or if you have, if you've thought about it very much. I don't think we've talked about it, but you might yeah. prove me well, wrong. Well, I just go so um, the brute force uh, for rectangular is all right. So this like super brute force is uh, into the into the. Uh, Five, right? <laughs> which is select the top left corner, select the bottom right corner. Um, yeah, right. One, Your you observation is enumerate all the rectangles and check each of them in linear time. Uh, each of them in linear time. Yeah, so that's uh, into the four rectangles times linear time for the checking, and then you can uh, make it uh, into the four. Uh, I think by doing the the checking uh, at the same time that you're like, looking for the the bottom right one. Uh, so that sounds very good to me. Maybe for educational purposes, we should really dig down into how we got to those complexities and what the solutions that we're both thinking of are. Yeah. Well, so for the enter the five, um, brute force. Correct me if I'm misrepresenting you here, but I feel like the key observation that you made sort of immediately and then abstracted on top of is that there are order n to the fourth rectangles, and this is because to define a rectangle, all you need is a top left corner, width, and a height. Yeah, that's right. So corners defined by the coordinates, which is x and y, and there's n x coordinates and n y coordinates. And then uh, same for the, the bottom right. And then, of course, it's much less than n to the four because the bottom right needs to be below the top left, so the coordinates will always be uh, Larger in both dimensions. Uh, it's well, n choose two squared. Right, and then also, uh, you only would want to care about corners that are, are black, so it's even smaller. But that's just a micro optimization. Yeah, I feel there's a lot of little optimizations like that that one can do. But I think that's what's what's going to happen in your end to the four is you're going to basically do the ultimate sort of optimization of that kind. For all the top left corners, for all the bottom right corners. 
check the border and find the largest one. So this is n uh, squared. Mm -hmm. Order n squared. Right. So instead of um, width and height, you're doing bottom right corner, but it's kind of the same thing because once you have a top left and a bottom right, it's you have all the same information as having a top left and a width and a height. It's the same exact same definition. Yeah. So that makes it into the five. Mm -hmm. um, you can just check the maximum over all the ones that pass the check. Yeah. Right. And computing area is not super hard once you have the, the two corners because you have the width and the height. Oh, we're doing, we're doing area instead of perimeter? I guess that it's like almost the same. I thought area would be nicer. Um, this is, seems like it might be a spoiler, but as far as I can tell, it's not. I think any algorithm that works for one will work for the other. Yeah, I mean, area is, has like these nonlinear properties that perimeter doesn't um, have. So it's conceivable that a solution uh, for, for our perimeter might not work for area. There might be optimizations you can do that split the axes for perimeter. It's conceivable, but I don't. All the solutions that I have thought about will work for both. All right. All right. Well, let's have a look at uh, like enter the four, enter the three uh, solution. So, uh, enter the four. In my idea for this, I actually have not fully worked out the details for this, but probably you want to start with all the top left corners and then try to do the the when you check the border here, you go over the same pixels. Like if you make the top, the bottom right, like one to the, if you move it one to the right, then you end up rechecking a lot of the same pixels. So you probably like don't need to do that. Right? You mean the chevron shape, like the, um, the bottom, the south and the east side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that part, that part um, may, uh, may change, but you can also pre-compute stuff. I wonder if there's a enter the four that doesn't involve uh, computing. Well, that's an interesting question. Well, if, is if, there if, a, if it's, is there a constant memory enter the four? So all right. So if it's uh, if it's uh, square, then it definitely exists. But that's just because you're like you only have n bottom right corners instead of n squared because the axes are the same. Uh, or a rectangle. Yeah, nice. No, different. For a rectangle, if you're trying to do enter the four or enter the three, you have to pre-compute, I think. Um, because if you don't, like you're just gonna be in your loop. And when you move the bottom right corner anywhere, that new like uh pixels that it touches will have a uh, will be order and new pixels that you have to check if you move the bottom right corner anywhere, right? So like and that'll be different every time uh for the same top left corner. So you uh if you're just trying to do something that does that looks at computations you previously computed for the same top left corner, you won't be able to reuse them at all, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure I can prove that there's no good algorithm that uses constant space, but I don't know of one. Yeah, constant space, that's a good way to phrase what I was... Uh, okay. uh, let, let's, let's just uh, use pre you know. So what kind of pre-computing? One thing we maybe should have made clear from the beginning is that I think n here is the side length because we said it's a square image, so we can say it's n by n. Like n is not the number of pixels, the number of pixels is n squared. Yeah, that's true. That's true, true. That's pretty true. <laughs> so this is like a pixel squared solution, this n to the four, really. Uh yeah. So n to the four, you do some pre-computing. So maybe an observation is that uh, wait, for each uh, each pixel, you can recompute how many black pixels are contiguous to the right, uh, to the left, uh, down and up, and that can be recomputed in a n squared time. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes like this: the fourth. The fifth. Uh, <laughs> so for, for each pixel, right? You know, I think somebody once told me that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> so if you assume that you already know uh, how many black pixels are contiguous, 
So why why is knowing the black pixels contiguous the in all directions from a pixel useful? It means that if you're at a you select the top left uh, corner, your candidate top left corner, and then you're trying to build a rectangle. Um, you go like uh, from the top left, and then you just like try moving to the right. Then for each one of those, you can tell like how far the rectangle could go down. Mm -hmm. Although. That's if you're like that feels like it kind of if you're trying to go for N3. Yeah, if you're just going for N4, you just try the uh all the top left corners, all the bottom right corners, and then you use this pre-computed table uh, and you check if like the contiguous things uh, from the bottom right pixel going up and going to the left uh overlap the continuous things from the top left pixel going to the right and going down. Yeah, that one I buy. Um and also a rephrasing of it that is not necessarily easier to code reason about. I just think is sort of the more um, generic way of doing it would be to just compute uh, cumulative sums for each row and column, and then just check is this side full of full of black pixels, like full of ones. Let's say let's say we're using one to represent a, a black pixel and a zero to represent a white pixel. So you can the um, cumulative sum, and you can check if a range is fully black pixels by checking if the number of pixels is yeah. equal to the uh, number of black pixels in that range. Yeah. Or alternatively, kind of you, could, you could keep the count of white pixels and just check it's zero, which uh, saves you doing one the subtraction. <laughs> yeah, the cumulative sum is easier to code, but maybe not easier to think about. I personally think it's easy to think about, but I don't necessarily think that that's going to be true for everyone. Well, I'll just write down. I think they're both good. I, I don't see any reason why you would use one over the other. They're both good. Like Whichever one you think of first and think you can code first is the best one. All right, to be honest, the cumulative sum one is easier to describe <laughs> with that. Uh, compute cumulative sums for each row and column. Uh, of the image, the grid, easy. And then, yeah, you use that, the cumulative sums, check uh, if the like up arms and left arms, the bottom right pixel intersect with the uh, le uh, right arms and down arms of the... Yeah, we just check every side of our potential rectangle, I guess. I, the nice thing about both of these enter the fours is that we're just taking the enter the five and changing the check the border part into order one instead of order n. It's basically what we're doing by doing pre computation. Yeah, it's uh, getting all the duplicated work that was like split over like different parts of the uh, loops and then using an order n loop to. Uh, do it all at once in like order and time in a sense at least the the kind of dp i was thinking of the one with the uh contiguous pixels uh going out from each direction from each pixel is kind of like that mm -hmm. all right so I mean, this is kind of it for like the like where marks easy like possible to think of solutions <laughs> and now i think it's going to get pretty hard um but the next step is N to the three or N to the, to the three again. Maybe you'll have a log squared or a square root or something. Who knows? Let's not sell ourselves short. Yeah, well, that would be quite quite tedious, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that. This is, uh, what's the notation? Um, little O of N to the four. We were just aiming for anything better than enter the fort. All right, yeah, but like, who who actually uses that? <laughs> I've used it uh, maybe once. <laughs> All right, so out of, out of uh, computer scientists, is used maybe once. Okay. <laughs> uh, it is kind of useful, right? Because you're we're just saying it's like um, strictly bounded from above by, which is kind of kind of useful sometimes. 
like it, in this case it's useful right like we're saying like all, the essence so, of what we're saying is we're definitely better than Android for if you like if you like did the uh like set subtraction of like order function subtract little o function does that equal omega o function omega um i'm just talking about little o right you but there's one that's like a you know like exact bound right like oh theta bounded. yeah yeah they oh theta it's theta <laughs> uh yeah yeah the set difference is theta yeah okay that makes sense because it's instead of being non-strictly bounded from above it's strictly bounded from above it's like so. uh less than less than equals right? exactly like yeah right that makes sense. um yeah cool so i i, I don't actually i don't know like it doesn't come to mind immediately what we can do here but uh some ideas I would try is like using range or segment tree somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, interesting. Let me let me just remember what I did. What the things I did for. MP. I'm gonna think at the same time. Oh yeah, I remember my the first solution that I had to this problem was um, the first proper solution I had was an n cubed one, but I think I thought of more than one. Yeah, I remember some more now. Okay. <laughs> we got out all the thinking time, so it looks like you instantly have solutions to everything. <laughs> it's only if I can solve the question, though, right? Otherwise, it's just going to be, like, cut until I'm, like... <laughs> cut until the end, like, or just end awkwardly go, here's the question, and that's it, everyone! <laughs> got it. Hmm. So I'm thinking about, uh, I thought of briefly about like changing, um, like your starting point. So we're starting at like the top left corner, but what if you like selected the center and went out, but I think it doesn't really change much. I think the solution is probably going to like involve fixing the top left corner and then just doing like the rest of the stuff in order and some, um, somehow, somehow using magic, um, yeah, using so, wizard hacks. I did also think about um, if you're trying to maximize area, then if you have like a one width rectangle of size like K, then if you're like computing, like looking at the frontier, which is like monotonically like going down and to the right, it forms like a um, hyperbola, right? Like one, you rephrase that? Minutes. I didn't understand. Like, if you if you imagine the frontier of rectangles that have the same area um, for a particular mm -hmm. top-left corner, the, the shape of the frontier is a uh, um, hyperbola, right? It looks like 1 on x. Oh, yeah, I got you now. Because it's like area k and then 2 by k on 2, right? Yeah. 3 by k on 3. Yeah, it's kind of like the Manhattan distance meme where you end up looking at diamonds. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, there's like a hyperbola in that. It's not the same shape, but it's the similar thing where you get this nice sort of, uh, these nice frontiers. Yeah, you ever that thing in like, in like school where you like, you draw like a line on like the Cartesian plane where it's like, you start at the top and you go to like the first one and then you go one down and then you put the other one like one down and then it makes a curve in the end. It's exactly that. Mate, right, I have no clue what you're talking about. All right, well, that, may, that makes one of us. Um, possibly two. <laughs> possibly two? <laughs> Look, possibly 1.5. <laughs> um, Wait, I only count as 0.5? No, we, we both count as 0 0.75. <laughs> um, yeah, just slightly subhuman. All right, so if you assume you fix the top left corner, you need like an ordering to try like the other ones, maybe. Um, an ordering. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got you then. If you... This is a weird little thought, thought path, but I like this. Okay, we'll see where it goes. Dude, you could, you could, you could uh, define an ordering on all, uh, on all squares in the image based on the Hilbert curve and then construct a range tree on top of the... Um, the Hilbert curve and then range, range query it and then <laughs> no 
again. No, I don't like it. All right, no, let me think about it. Well, no, what, what, no, no, what, how, what, what is the range query going to give you? I don't know, something. <laughs> it gives you anything. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you try looking at the, uh, just like the top left and top right edges and try to make them bigger, maybe there's some fast way you can do like the query for the, the bottom left and bottom right edges. Um, all right, if we assume we've got a top left and a, and a width, right? Then we're already at like enter three. Right? <laughs> this is what you're saying though, because you're saying top, top left and top right. So same thing. Uh, I, I mean like looking at the, the edges, like the, the top, uh, oh, yeah. the, the, the left and upper edges. Right, so the upper chevron. Yeah, but like if you, it's already a rectangle. Yeah, yeah, but then you can like um, if you, if you could uh somehow check the uh bottom right stuff like uh really oh, quickly. Yeah. I mean, it ends up being N four, but the the thoughts for that might help getting to an. End. Yeah, you might you might find a pattern somewhere. All right, let's let's try top left and width only. If like that gets us any. So then you're like, oh, this could work actually, maybe. Um, then you're like, just controlling like the um bottom edge, right? You have to check it in constant time though. All log time. All it, log time. Yeah, it, well, if you check it in constant time, you're you're still um, into the flooring. Well, no. Uh, it depends if you're enumerating them all. And what I'm saying is that if you have a top left and a width, that's already into the three thing. It's already into the three, so you have to do everything else in like sublinear time. All oh, right, I thought you meant like per, per bottom edge. Yeah, you have yeah, to. Once, do you've got, once you've got the two edges, you've already you've already found a, a rectangle. Yeah, but you could reuse work, I think, from like the one directly above. Maybe you could like do some like weird scan line kind of thing, mm -hmm. like going from like the bottom upwards. And then if you can save like results from below you, then you can use it to like build the one above. You just have to be careful about the vertical sides of the rectangle. Yeah, I mean, you, you do with the sides. Do with the sides. If the sides aren't too bad. Um, all right, so you assume you got like a, a, a fixed top left. and a, Then if you knew, if you knew, like, what the best answer was for, um, like, the same problem, but one thing below you, like, the same width in the same left corner, except you go one below. If you knew what the answer is um, for that, except you don't require that, like, that one's top edge is filled in, then you'd be able to construct the best answer for, like, where you currently are. Cool. You gave me a, an idea for a third solution to this problem I'd never thought about okay. just now. Hopefully it gives me a, 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 an idea for a, a, the first solution to this problem I've never thought about. Yeah, and if it doesn't, I'll hit you towards your own solution that you just told me. Okay. So, um, if you, so if you store like, the answer for both of them, right? I feel like you might better just do like a DP where the state is... Uh, the top left corner and the width, and then you save the result from the previous row, right? And it's kind of like a Dane's algorithm, but like two dimensional vertical. <laughs> so Cadane's, except it's nothing like Cadane's. Yeah, I mean, look, don't don't you start, okay? <laughs> no, I, I see the analogy. I see the analogy. Right, because like you have to reset like your rectangle over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like I think this works actually. Um, although, hang on. I mean, it's kind of enter the four. <laughs> well, what are your what are your recursions? Well, let's let's dig into this DP a bit. So you're at the top left corner, and you have a particular width. And the way you check um, is you look at the thing one row below you, 
and you have the answer for it, but the also the answer for it uh, without the constraint of having to fill in the, the top edge, right? And the answer is like how deep the rectangle can go. Like what, what is the height of the, the best rectangle? Right. So in a sense, you're looking for the you're looking for the the you've you've diff, you've set a lid and you're looking for the bottom of your box. Yeah, that's right. So and it's then, just like you've got this DP on what's the biggest box I can make. Yeah, biggest like bucket. And then the yeah. DP stores like the the best closed bucket and the best like open. Of course, they'll be the same. Um unless uh you can't make a closed bucket. Right, so your return values are uh, you, you I probably like... have like a, a, like two like a boolean state, whatever. I mean, it probably doesn't matter because you can just like loot through all of them in the end and just check if uh. If you're trying all lids, yeah. all you need is the biggest, um, biggest bucket. Yeah, yeah, you can just check the lids at the end, and it's and it should be do doable in. For any intrepid listener, what I mean by biggest bucket is, um, the part of a rectangle. That does not include its upper edge. Oh, actually, hang, do, on. Do, hang on. This is this is actually this is N four. This is N three. It actually just solves a problem. Yeah, it's N three. This is an N three solution, and it's actually the exact same N three solution that was the first one I thought of uh, when I was trying to solve this problem in N three. I thought this problem would be like really hard, but actually wasn't too bad. Oh, but we're not done yet. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> We've just got the easy the easy versions out of the way now. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, yeah. We can uh, we'll, we'll, we can move on to n squared soon. <laughs> well, that means there's probably like an n squared login. No, nah, there's an n squared solution. Yeah, but like also an n squared login. Uh, yes, there is. Yeah, because you can just run your n squared solution login time. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if I feel like writing all of this out. But, uh, so, so this is a biggest bucket DP. And width and check bucket below you. Yeah. The DP is on the biggest bucket and you just try every lid. Like every upper edge. Right, so... Right up and just to be clear, the DP is... I have... My state is basically a pair of columns and a row. And I just want to return the biggest bucket I can make such that this is the top of the bucket. And the recursion that I have in mind is I just check that these two, um, the, the, the two points at those two columns and that row, those two points are, are both black pixels. If they're not, then I, I have to return like some sentinel value like uh, negative infinity saying I can't do it. Uh, if they are pixels, then I have a case I can consider where I can consider going down by one, so increasing the row by one. And I also need to check a final case, which is checking if the entire segment between the two columns on that row is filled black. In which case, I also have the option of returning one. So it'll be um, the maximum of, of one and the recursive call, assuming that these two pixels are definitely black. And if they're not, then it's some sentinel value that says that it's impossible. Yeah, I wasn't really listening to what you said, but I also wrote out my solution here, which is probably the same. It's for each row from the bottom to top, for each uh, uh, left point and width. You, you can look at the previous row and see what the biggest bucket was, except it might not exist because you might not be able to form a bucket. If uh, the current uh, left point to left point plus width, if everything is black uh, for every like square in there, then the bucket, we could start a bucket here because it'll be the bottom of the bucket. Also, if just the left point and the left plus width uh, point are both black, then we can continue our bucket from the previous row. Um, yeah, so this is a bottom-up version of what I was thinking. One, one subtlety here is that for each left point, it, it's 
This is for each left point of width. That loop is only looping over n squared things because your row is fixed. There's only n left point. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, that's n to the three. I don't know if I can do n squared. Let's find out. Uh, there, there is a, a couple of other n cubed ish solutions out there. All right. Yeah, so the one you gave me an idea for is fix two. Let's say we're going to fix two rows. And we're going to look at all the solutions that have the top lid and the bottom lid on those two rows. So we need to pre compute a bunch of stuff. Like, for I'm example, the lid I was thinking um, you just. You look, you need to pre compute all of the columns where um, it's filled black all the way from the bottom to the top along that column. So, so these are potential N -cube left columns. and right sides. N cube such columns. Yeah, so that we're, we're, we've now computed N cube things. Yeah. Um, and then what we need to do is. loop through each of these n cubed things right um there's some monotonicity here when we're considering one column like let's say we're considering a column to be our leftmost lid mm -hmm. the top and bottom will only go for so far before one of them hit a white pixel that's a like limit mm -hmm. and then we're just looking for the rightmost column in that range that is all filled black so it's kind of like a range query so what are the n cubed things you're looking through are, looping through are those the columns or the the lids we're looping through every pair of rows, and then for each pair of those rows, we're looping through every left side. Oh, okay, yep. And then we have sort of this fixed range where the top and bottom are contiguous black pixels. Oh, okay, I see. So, um, and you want, you want to find if there's like a, a column that spans those and like the rightmost column that spans those? Yeah. Okay, and then you can, well, you can range query that somehow, I guess. Right. And if you Maybe. choose not to do a range query, it becomes the DP. Ah. Oh. What about There's also another n cubed I know of. I guess the um, the range query. Do you need? Do you need a a range, a range tree for each row? Or like even a range tree for each row and like height? I guess we would, yeah, use a range tree for each pair of rows. We would build, we would spend like linear time building this range tree for each pair of rows. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. And then, and then your, your entire solution is uh, n-cubed again. Yeah. So here's another n-cubed login. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one that I quite like. So we can actually do all of this with a really funky divide and conquer. Mm. Take the image, make a midline in the image. Iterate through every pair of rows, right? And say that, well, we're just gonna look for rectangles that pass through the midline at these two points, defined by the two rows we're iterating. This is like and connecting we can... two buggers together. Sorry? This yeah, it is it's like connecting. connecting. It's like connecting a left and a right bucket together. Uh, assuming the midline is top to bottom. It's like a, it's like a column. Um, so we can do that check in linear time if we've pre-computed some columns because we can just sort of iterate out on either side, checking the left and right um, extremities as we go. Hang on, I don't get it. I was imagining the solution would be something like a, you you divide it and then you want to compute like the the biggest bucket for every like a, um, pair of uh things on like the the line which you cut the thing in into each side. Yeah, that's what you do. Okay, so you see that, all right? And then and then you just like uh, loop through all of them and take the answer. So loop through every um pair of cut points in the midline and take the best answer for the left and the best answer for the right and sum them um, or, or do whatever to convert its area 
and then uh, choose the, the biggest one out of all. Right. So that's, we could do all that in n cubed time. Yes. Um, so just checking, and just checking the midline once you computed everything. Uh, for each pair, well, if you're pre-computing the buckets, the, the buckets, yes. But I feel like if you're checking all of these pairs, you kind of don't need to because it, just all it you need to pre- time. Yeah, you just do it, in, do it in linear time every time. Saves you a bit of memory. But the point is you can do it in n cubed time uh, using techniques we've already used in previous solutions. Um, not even advanced techniques. We're using the technique from n to the 4, basically. Um, all we need is the cumulative sum to quickly check uh, a column segment to get our left um, lid and our right lid. And we just brute force the, the top the top and bottom lids um, for every pair of locations on our, our midpoint column. So do we, you only have to split it once? No. Are you going to split it like multiple times, right? So this finds us the best rectangle that passes through the midpoint, but now we have to look at rectangles that don't. Oh, okay. So well, you we did the same thing. Okay. So you can recurse on the same thing and always pick a midpoint that's a column. This will actually give you kind of okay performance. I think it will give you like n cubed log, I think. But if you alternate your your midpoints, yeah, because the the line that you cut it will get smaller if you if you alternate the axes. But if you yeah don't, that's you're just right. Get like a size n um cut every time, and it's gonna yeah. be like a bit faster. But it's gonna be like, well, I don't know. But you'd be multiplying by like a smaller thing. It'd be like big number multiplied by smaller number, which is gonna be smaller than like. Um, most of the numbers multiplied together, right? Yeah, well, one way you can look at it is um, you're still halving the number of pixels every time. Yeah, so... Well... Uh, mm, uh, but I guess um, you... you the, the, like, the line, right? The length of the line, you're doing n squared on that and then linear on, like, the, the rest. So you want to make yeah. the squared one as small as possible. You still basically look at all the pixels every time. Oh, um, why is one faster than <laughs> So the simple answer is you can just do the master theorem and it works out. That's not an answer. But the other answer is like if you just write out the, uh, the algebra for what's happening, one sort of is obviously uh, n cubed log, and one is n cubed. Yeah, and I think I understand like the algebraic reason, right? Like, you on the thing you're doing n squared on, you want to make that smaller, right? But it doesn't explain why it's actually faster, right? So like, you must be looking at um, like the same pixel less less often. Well, you're right that the essential part here is that the midpoint is is also getting smaller. Right. Um, like, we get more out of uh, a single iteration of our divide and conquer. Yeah, I think that translates, I think the under, fundamental underlying reason is that translates into you end up looking at the same pixel fewer times, right? Yes. Because there'll be less overlap. If you just, like, divide, like, a horizontal line every time, you're going to, like, cover the same pixel multiple times. Like, when you looked at it as, like, the top half of some recursion, and when you, like, subdivide that half, you're going to look at a bunch of pixels. In like the bottom half of a smaller recursion. And they'll be the same. Yeah. Thing. So this gives us a really elaborate n cubed solution. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> hmm. So to put this in the right context, the n squared is extremely difficult. Um, I have never seen anyone solve n squared in any reasonable length of time, and I have asked some extremely good competitive programs. Uh, is this going to like involve some like uh, actual constant time uh, disjoint set on like linear graph kind of like memes, <laughs> like the square one? So, so um, 
To answer your question, how about I give you the complexity of my solution, the way I would actually implement it in practice rather than its theoretical best complexity? How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds like it's better than a kick in the teeth. Maybe, we'll see. Um, the, the complexity of the solution that I would actually implement for this uh, is uh, n squared inverse Ackerman at n. Okay, so the answer to my question is yes. Yeah. And now your follow-up question is, how the fuck does Union Fine have anything to do with this? Yeah. Um, well, surely it's got to be like a similar reason for like square version of the problem, which I haven't talked about. Um, in the square version of the problem, you go down like the diagonal and like some um, kind of monotonously like argument make that they use this term. Uh, um, Don't you think it's sort of bizarrely satisfying how they both have n squared solutions? I wonder if there's like some generalization of these kind of like border, like border problems, like square problems, where it says that you can always do it in like a number of uh, pixel axes. Like, I mean, an order n squared number of pixel axes. Well, here's an interesting one that, where, as far as I know, you, you can't. Um, so, what about finding the maximum sum subsquare or maximum sum sub rectangle? As far as I can tell, sub rectangle, sub -rectangle can't be done better than n cubed. Is this including like the middle? Yeah, this is. Um, I feel like including the middle is kind of a different class of problems to just order, right? Because that's that's a the order that's of the number of pixels is different. That's true. It is kind of interesting though that that one can be done quickly for square, but not for rectangle. As far as I know, the the square one is just like the DP where you like add the things and then subtract the things. Yeah. Cool. I mean, just add the things and subtract the things. Just use math. But the thing is, you can't do that for the rectangle, which is kind of interesting. Uh, maybe you need to use some advanced techniques, like multiple divisions. Well, as far as I know, there's no, there's no solution that's better than NQ. Yeah, yeah, I'm just fucking, I'm just messing. Um, how do you use union find? <laughs> you can't, like, go down the diagonal because it's a square. But if you look at this solution, the one we have already... Where we're like on each row, and then we're looking at like the left point, and right point, like the left point, and, and we're like, <laughs> Do you want a, a really funny hint? No, not yet. All right. As soon as like you're on the row, as soon as you say left point and right point, you kind <laughs> of like memed yourself. Yeah, that's it. You're done. Yeah, you can't do any more. You can only do like a couple, a couple of. You can't even look at like. All the rows. Yeah. You can, all you can pick is a row and a left point. Okay, so it can't, it can't be that, because we need to look at each pixel once, at least. Otherwise, um, otherwise, there will be a breaking case for our solution. You do not look at each pixel. So we have to go back to looking at like each pixel like one time, except we don't know which order we want to look at. Right? Um, but I guess. You want to look at it in an order where you can like use substructure from the previous things you've looked at. If it's union find, right? I've got a nice argument for why splitting on the midpoint in the divide and conquer every time is n cubed log n. Every pixel um, gets looked at in every every pixel gets looked at n times at every layer. Yeah, and it's not true for alternating your axes. Yeah, because it's like a binary tree if it was like washed to be like two dimensional. Whereas the mm. other one is like more like a quad tree. It's exactly like a quad tree. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, so we got to find an order to visit these pixels that we can do new find. And also, there has to be some kind of like, not like equivalence relation, but, in it, but maybe it's going to be like, uh, like um, like a, a relation, like less than or something, and then you like build up like these like less than chains or whatever, and then you get to the end and like you have one that's like yeah the biggest one. 
you build up mm -hmm. these lesson chains and the way that you like um say that one thing is less than another thing is by like you know, binding them together or something. Um, and then you have like the top like the rep set representative of the combine to be like the biggest one you have so far um and it should be possible to do this even when you're using like the the um login optimization plus the rank optimization so you still get your inverse account but then what are you saying is less than another thing <laughs> Well, to determine that, you'd have to be an inverse hacker man. Uh, okay. Good one. <laughs> and it, is this lesson idea, like, on the right track? No, I have no idea what you're doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to reverse engineer the solution from the properties of you. Yeah. At least that's what I wanted you to try and do because I thought it would be funny. Well, are you laughing now? Uh, internally, yes. Okay. Well, that's better than nothing. Better than a kick in the teeth. <laughs> Depends on the kick and the teeth. Um, are you want to give me that hint? Yeah. The key to this is to uh, uh, use the divide and conquer approach. I really don't like it. Oh, you're gonna have to. Would you like a follow up hint that's like actually useful? Nah, not yet. If you use the divide and conquer approach, you're still doing n squared uh, stuff on the on the midline, right? So you're already like maimed at that. So you need to do like not n squared stuff on the mid. I disagree. If you can process the whole midline mm -hmm. in n squared time. Then your whole algorithm will be n squared. Yeah, okay, that's true because it's n squared plus n squared on two. Plus. Yeah, yeah, and because the square is getting up in your denominator, it just ends up being a nice little constant factor of n squared. Right, because even though you do it twice, uh, n on two squared times two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's true. That's true. True. That's pretty true. Um, that's basically the difference, right, between splitting alternating axes and splitting on the midline every time on the same axis every time is that square is getting into a denominator in one when you write the algebra out and it's not in the other so you have like you know yeah. your one times whatever two times whatever four times whatever in one and then you get the same thing in the other it's just like divider d divisor is growing faster mm -hmm. so the problem with dividing conquer why why it's uh in n cubed Assuming that you don't do like, assuming that you alternate the axes, so it's actually n. Um, is that you you have to do order and processing for each uh, pair of points on the midline, which involves like going like out and then using like some pre-computed stuff to check if there's like a a, a lid to the bucket, right? You order n to right. get the columns, and you use the pre-computed table to check for the the lid on the bucket. Um, but I wonder if you started from like the bottom, so like it's the top and you divide and conquer, but if you started from like the bottom of the divide and conquer, and then you went up and like merged the solutions together. Okay, I hate it, but go on. <laughs> well, I don't know if this is going anywhere, <laughs> right? Then make like, cause like you're, you, you have smaller things and you're making them bigger things. So you might be able to like reuse the computations on I understand the intuition. Yeah. Right. So, and then you can also like, if you also thought of like joining like those like um, those like bucket bucket boys, joining them together as a union find operation, maybe you can do that somehow. Oh yeah. You know, like just, just that's uh, the yeah. <laughs> Let's look for the union find. It's gonna be somewhere. It, yeah, it'll be it'll be somewhere in there. Uh. But the problem is once you do that, then you just got like a box and you can't like use it in like the when you go up a level. Mm. Like a box and it's just like being a box. Get boxed in. Yeah, but like what if what if you also knew like for a particular um subdivided part, like which ones have like columns that like span like the whole the whole thing? So you could like make a bigger okay. 
Oh, but if you're alternating the axes, then you can't even use the bucket. <laughs> yeah, it seems hard to reuse stuff in a clear way. Yeah, that's true. If you jump up two levels, though, now you're now you're at the same uh, <laughs> you got the same axis, so you're golden. It sounds so hard to implement. Yeah, I, I, I it's probably not the correct way to do it. So let's uh, forget about it. Uh, would you like your second hint now? Yeah. Okay. So. Hint number two. Do you remember when we talked about N cubed and how you made me think of a new solution idea? 